How you felt, gentlemen of Athens, when you heard my accusers? I don't know, but I, well, I nearly forgot who I was. They were so persuasive. Yet as for truth, one might almost say they have spoken not one word of truth. But what most astonishes me in the many lies they told was when they warned you to take care not to be deceived by me because I was a terribly clever speaker. They ought to have been ashamed to say it because I, I shall prove them wrong at once by fact when I begin to speak. And you will see that I am not a, a bit of a clever speaker. That seemed to me the most shameless thing about them. Unless, of course, they call one who speaks the truth a clever speaker. If that is what they mean, I would agree that I am not an orator of their class. Well then, these men, as I said, have spoken hardly one word of truth. But you shall hear from me the whole truth. Not eloquent gentlemen like their own decked out in fine words and phrases, not covered with ornaments, not at all. You shall hear things spoken anyhow in the words that first come. For I believe justice is in what I say, and let none of you expect anything else. Indeed, it would not be proper, gentlemen, for an old man like me to come before you like a boy molding his words in pretty patterns. That's um, the Apology, Socrates. That's uh, Socrates. Socrates was was not, it didn't write anything down. He This is Plato telling the story. It's 2500 BC. I'm sorry, 500 BC. And um, this is uh, Halloween in Brooklyn, by the way. Pretty fascinating, right? Let's celebrate Halloween. So, so that was that's a pretty powerful reading by Socrates, and it's something that I wanted to talk about today because is the is Socratic Socrates thinking <laughs> Plato relevant now it, it could have been he could have said that yesterday about you know the prosecution of unpopular ideas that benefit everybody right? the, 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 the idea of the rebellion the idea of not being decked out in fine words and I think the I think the phrase that, that really comes to mind is sell out where people start out with good integrity and then then what happens is financial <laughs> needs kick in and they compromise they say ah fuck it well you know whatever I like eating it's good I like food I, I like I, I like travel I, you know I like to I want to be comfortable I don't want to fucking struggle all this truth shit all you do is struggle right well, today, right there. So, so the the movie that the movie that comes to mind is 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 deception, self deception, dangerous. What am I talking about? Where where politicians believe their bullshit, and the bullshit that they believe, they believe it, but it's so obviously wrong to everybody around them. And it becomes dangerous. And the, the, the movie that comes to mind, <laughs> education through movies, is The Fog of War. If you haven't seen it, you must, you must watch The Fog of War. And it's, it's, John Mac, it's Robert McNamara, was the uh, Secretary of Defense. He was involved forever in politics as a Harvard academic or maybe it was Yale, I don't know, one of those schools, watched a movie. But he was a big academic and all the 
I think Kennedy might have been the first to bring him into office. And he was one of the orchestrators of, of um, I mean, he helped, he helped navigate the, the Cuban Missile Crisis with Kennedy. But the, mo the most startling revelations are the Vietnam War, where McNamara defines the fog of war, that, that the, the people leading the charge don't fully understand what they're doing. Right, and and instead of leading with integrity and and um, the goodwill of the people that you represent, they lead by force and ignorance. Right, you know, and some of the most startling scenes were startling revelations in that in in McNamara's movie testimony was. Certainly, when they dropped the bombs, he was also involved in World War II. The, 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 uh, the, the engineering of the dropping of the bombs in over Japan, Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima. And he was they, he he describes how the how the the generals and the president at the time didn't understand the Japanese and. You know, and how they they systematically burn the city to the ground because they didn't know what to do. I said, oh, "It's made of wood, right? Japan, all the houses are made of wood. Burn it, right?" And and they they didn't they they, they didn't take into the consideration the humanity of the Japanese. Now that, that's a gray area, but the one in Vietnam is much more understandable because. The, the Americans didn't understand that, the, that the, the North and South Vietnamese hated each other for 4,000 years and that none of them would ever side with the communist Chinese. But that's what the Americans thought. They thought they saw it as, Lyndon B. Johnson saw it as ideology. Well, you know, if one of these little countries gets knocked off by the Chinese, then how many more of these little countries are going to take get knocked off? Right? He was wrong. He was wrong. And, 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 you know, three million Vietnamese died and a million American soldiers died. And all kinds of people died because of this idiot's ignorance. That it was a civil war within the country. And not some sort of toppling or submission to communism, as he had thought. See, that's the fog of war. But it's also the fog of life. Right? <laughs> I don't know what I wanted to say about that, but it, it, it makes me wonder where where all of this has been known for so long, where Socrates, 500 years before Christ walked the earth, knew it. <laughs> the, you know, the answers lie within. The Buddha knew it. Look, look within. Why are you looking outside? It's all, what goes on outside is going on inside. Want to solve the problems outside? Look within. You know, all these, all these uh, startling revelations. And I think what I, want, what I wanted to come... Uh, what I wanted to, to bring out is the bickering and the fighting amongst uh, the American people right now, right? And we see it in, in terms of sides, YouTube, political sides. And right here on YouTube, the sides of, you know, I mean, it's fun to bash each other and challenge each other. And I, I as I've always said, I welcome the challenge. I don't censor this channel like others. You can say whatever you want, right? That's just that's your right to speak. I want to know what you're saying, because as time goes on, when you say something ridiculous, it stays up there, and then you're forced to take it down. I like that. I like that form of self-censorship. But we bicker and we fight, and it's we do it because it's funny and it's. And, and um, you know, 
and it's necessary. It's necessary discourse. But the real enemy is not each other, right? As Socrates points out that the establishment lines up against the truth. And then one day you realize that what side, which side are you on? Are you on the side of the truth? Or are you on the side of the establishment? I mean, it's not hard to figure out where you stand. Right? What is the side of the truth? That's where, that's where, that's where I like to think I am. You know, no corporate assistance, no corporate money, just still a guy in a park, really, for the most part. Oh yeah, I got a fancy joystick. I got a microphone so you can hear me, so people stop saying I can't hear you. But essentially the same, you know. Nothing really changes to keep to keep grounded in the in the people. And maybe someday represent those people as a senator. And stay grounded, not not you know, and we, we see it in media. When when people, you know, here on YouTube, they get a little advantage, a little footing how it goes to their head and then they start to step on the people below them. You know? I just fundamentally, you know, I disagree with that philosophy based on history. It just doesn't, it doesn't jive with me. When people, you know, become, you know, you, you could see the transition into phony, into money grabbing, uh, you know? So I think that's the fight always. I mean, it's, it's always, you could, find yourself in a, in a in a jam and then you take that you take on that job and and a job is you know requires that you oppress people in some way or get on the phone and get them to spend money they don't have and right it's it's unfeathered capitalism that that is causing people such great pain in this country Right? I mean, that's my, that is my view. That is my opinion. All the little fights below, it's fun, you know. It's fun to call each other names and, and, and fight each other. But really, I'm no enemy of anybody on YouTube or anybody that comments and dislikes me. I just say that, well, they don't understand. They don't understand what I'm talking about. They don't know, they don't know where I'm coming from. Maybe they'll stay and figure it out that I'm actually, I'm actually on their side. And you too, it's not about me. It's about, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, I'm just talking about broad opinion, about staying, staying, staying grounded in the truth. Socrates knew that. John McNamara didn't know it at the time, but he figured it out later. You know, and he was forever guilty of that. Like, he, it was a very brave movie to watch. He, I think at some point he breaks down in tears because he realized how wrong he was. And that, and, and that he was just an academic who was thrown in trying to help a president and the people of the country, but he didn't, you know, he was, he, he just... He was trying to do good as a, you know, as a um, foot soldier, right? Whereas the true truth, Socrates or someone like Gandhi stays grounded in the truth. And is, it's unshakable. It's an unshakable truth. No matter what happens in politics, no matter what, ha what which way the wind is blowing, it's the same message of truth, you know. Equality for all. So, so that's my rant for today. Marcus Conti reporting.